the same old people all want to be your best employees. And I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. And when I was in the workforce, I never took a person all day, never took a sick day, never took an anything day. And I was in that job part time for 13 years total, switch, schools, switch positions. And now most employees, you will hear them say, let me take a person all day, let me do this. No, the disabled show up, they gotta do what they gotta do, and then they leave, and then it's amazing to the individual that hired them because we have the work ethic of, at least I do, I have the work ethic of no one else. I have the work ethic of someone who's driven, someone who wants to get things done. And so I think when it comes to hiring a person with a disability, that is your best investment. Welcome to Super Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Shahid Durrani. Today we have with us Wynn Charles. Wynn has cerebral palsy, and her mission is to help others with physical and mental disabilities to find their voices through written or spoken words using today's assistive technologies as needed. Welcome to our show, Wynn. Thanks for having me. And yes, My pleasure. I do have cerebral palsy. I am... Fun fact about me, people don't know that I am 50% of the time in a power chair, which is a brand new toy to me. Well, it's not new. Like, it's, it's a new sense more to to 2022. And when I moved to Phoenix, Arizona, I got the opportunity to have a more of a handicapped accessible lifestyle. So hence, power chair. But I have always been in, in a power, in a wheelchair, on and off, and I was able to walk up until the age of 18 oh. where I had a back surgery go long and then I couldn't, my spine can't hold me up anymore. And so, hence the power chair. And you may be wondering, when is now speaking French, we might as well turn this podcast off because I don't understand the words cerebral palsy. Yes, cerebral palsy is a lack of oxygen injury at first. Yes, I have had it since birth. So, cerebral palsy is a lack of oxygen injury at birth. Yes, I've had it since birth. Wow. And you had it since birth. Look at all the work that you're doing. This well, may, because you're like a, a, you're advocate for people with disability and yep. you believe there are some unique strengths that individuals have with CP. Yep. And what do you think they are when it comes to the business world? So if anybody in the audience may have this condition and they want to go into business, they want to do something for we themselves. I retired from the educational bug um, and became a self taught journalist. I'm slowly but surely finishing up with journalism degree. Life got in the way. And so they say when, even if you hire a disabled person as your assistant, which we'll get to in a minute, but they say hiring a disabled person you only have to teach them a couple 
times and then they'll, as soon as they get to talk, they'll work as hard as they can. The same old people are one of your best employees. And I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. And when I was in the workforce, I never took a person all day, never took a sick day, never took an anything day. And I was in that job part time for 13 years total, switch, schools, switch positions. And now most employees, you will hear them say, let me take a person all day, let me take a sick day, let me do this. No, the disabled show up, they got to do what they got to do, and then they leave, and then it's amazing to the individual that hired them because we have the work ethic of, at least I do, I have the work ethic of no, no one else. I have the work ethic of someone who's driven, someone who wants to get things done. And so I think when it comes to hiring a person with a disability, that is your best investment. That's the best investment. That's great to hear. These qualities are also good when they do their own business. Yeah. I mean, no, so I have... So my book through my podcast, I have a big fan base. My fan base will clamor at the fact that I was on another podcast because they want to support me and love me and support Loyal. me. And they will clamor at the fact that I am on another podcast. So with your fan base and my fan base combined, it's going to be interesting what the download numbers are like. So any other qualities that you notice with individuals with this condition when they go into business for themselves? I, I noticed that they know how this, well, some people know how to ask for help. Some others are slowly learning how to ask for help. And asking mm -hmm. for help is not a sign of weakness. No, not at all. Not at all. That's great. So with your personal journey with CP, how did it influence your decision when you went into and did a triathlon? I am about to qualify for Kona again, Kona Hawaii triathlon again, again, I said, again, That's this amazing. is my second time doing it. This is my second time doing it. The first time it was a complete disaster and we'll get to that joy in a minute. I don't mind talking about that. But when I did it the first time, I was opposed by my family member and I remember I was sitting in my office one day, and she goes, I have a surprise for you. And she's the type to hide surprises to the last minute. And I had just lost my mother in 2010. So I'm like, get to the point. I don't have the time for this. I was working on a podcast. I was doing what I could to support myself. And I'm like, get to the point. I don't have time for this. And she goes, do you want to do triathlon with me? And I remember sitting in my office, my big office at the time, saying, really? I don't have the physical strength to do triathlon. I don't have anything else. Okay. I said okay, but it was really a looking back on it, and I hate to use this language, but it was really a shit show because it was all about her. I had learned triathlon, triathlete, a so self 
said that it's all about them. It's mm. about no one else and winning the race. It's all about them. So she dragged me. And of course, I train like I'm doing now from months. I hired a personal trainer. I trained for two months. I had, I was barely eating anything because I, I could due to her regiment. And so I got, people thought I was stressed out. I actually look better than I did when I did my first triathlon because people thought I was stressed out over the death of my mom. No, I said I'm training for a triathlon and I could barely eat because this tri triathlete who's doing it with me is so stuff. Then I, she wants to win the race. And so we get, we get pulled off the course when it comes to the biking because she's taking it forever, number one. And they only give you a certain amount of time. And I'm, she has me hooked up to the back of a bike and not even allowed to pedal. And now this time I'm doing it with number one, a strong triathlete. Number two, I'm train, I'm training again, like I always do with the endurance thing. And then number three, I'm, we have a completely different setup. Plus, we have support who is in a triathlon scene. Only one person won't be who's ever done a triathlon in life. But at least that one person who's going to be my aide will be able to support me. Because my aide at the time was trying to support me and then, and then it's, no, I don't need, I need the aid help, but my teammate decided that she didn't need the aid help either. She didn't need all her help either. She decided to, and when I tell you guys this, you know, this is not my personality. We were staying at the four seasons in Call in Hawaii because my teammate wanted to stay at the four seasons at the at, in Kona Hawaii. So the four seasons is a wonderful hotel, don't get me wrong. But I realized do you know how for the four seasons is out from the main race area? It's an hour out. So we would jump in the car at this in the morning. Drive into Kona, which Kona, when it comes to Kona, Hawaii, you've heard that they don't want tourists there anymore. So, therefore, this is a recent thing. So, therefore, when it comes to the Kona Iron Man, they are very, very overprotective of the island. And they're very nice about it, but then after the Kona Iron Man leaves, they say, everyone, get out. Well, because we want our island back. And so they have primarily a couple of months ago, I heard that it's been said on the news, don't come to, don't come to Hawaii mm -hmm. at all. We want island back. And so the natives want the island back. But come to Hawaii, the Iron Man triathlon is biggest Iron Man in the world because of the reason why they make a big deal out of it is a little bit just a triathlon, but the reason why they make a big deal out of it is where it's placed in Kona, Hawaii. And I mm. was, I had the advantage of being in Colorado at the time. And so my teammate, the day, the day of the Kona, Hawaii Ironman race, my team, this is after we get pulled off the bike course. My team, my teammate is sitting there in a bathrobe while I am in a wet triathlete suit. And I'm like, 
no, we're not doing this again. If you ever want to do it again, I'm refusing to do it with mm. you because I need help. I need help getting dressed. I need help doing all this. So I just feel like this time around, it's going to be better, Good. better, better set up to begin with. And yes, Good. I'm doing a half Iron Man in December to train to qualify for Kona. That's good. I'm glad to hear the enthusiasm for this time around. Even though you had difficulty the first time around, you're well, going towards it with more positivity. That's the, wonderful. Uh, the only reason why I'm enthusiastic again to do it is because my teammate won't be there. I have a totally different teammate and I'm strong going into it. I'm strong mentally, strong physically, strong good. emotionally going into it. So that's Wonderful. why I'm in so the absent to do it again. Good. So can you share with us some challenges that you face when you were starting your own business? Let's talk about food. At the beginning of the day, and a lot of the disabled community use the spoon analogy. And so at the beginning of the day, you have 20 spoons, let's say. By the end of the day, it dwindles down to one. So I'm a morning person. Me getting up at 6 a.m. to do this podcast and to be able to no sweat off my back. And so by the end of the day, I have one spoon and then it goes to zero spoon. By last night, by the end of my appointment, I had one spoon. By the time the vehicle came and picked me up, I had the old spoon because I have to concern my energy. My energy is, I have a difficult time speaking. I have a difficult time sitting up. I have a difficult time if I, if it's the end of the day and I get way too tired, I have a difficult time eating, feeding myself. And so I have a difficult time speaking. The speech goes out the door. And so at the end of the day, I have to conserve my energy of what I do. And so mm -hmm. I. But you still do a much, lot. I still do a lot. I pretty yeah. much use my phone throughout the day. And then Good. I I am working on my thirteenth book right now. It's put on hold because of the funding. I need to raise capital for that. And I'm considering writing another book to infuse it with write the other book before I write this book. So I'll be on fourteen books by the time I write this book wow. because I need capital Incredible. to to publish this book. And I am a 12th time published author. My work should be found all over the place. It could be found at Audible, Amazon, all over the place. So, yeah. yeah. I'm so honored to have you on the show and learn about this and the difficulties and your perseverance and how you look at life and how you're moving ahead, regardless of what you were given at birth. You're going after what you want, and I commend you for that. It's great to hear. Can you share with us what you feel your innermost superpower is that got you to this point in your life? My faith. Oh, My I love that. Because love that. It is because when I hit rock bottom in 2019, and when I hit rock bottom in 2019, and I had to sell my house and I had to move, I didn't know where I would still move at the time. I did, but I didn't know exactly how it was going to work out. And the funny enough, I was sitting in a hotel room waiting for my boiler to get fixed. And a family member hands me 
my house is called Luna Zool. The main establishment is called Luna Zool. And so she hands me the website of the Luna Zool. And I'm like, what? Luna Zool? And I look at the website, and it's still wonky to this day. The website is still wonky to this day. And so I am the one calling a Phoenix Arizona song about it. Saying I have a disability. What's the deal with Little Zilt? So a very nice real estate agent who I now know explains to me what's the deal with Little Zilt. And they go at the end of the phone call. They go, "When? How are you making it? How are you? How are you surviving in Aspen, Colorado?" I said, "Barely surviving." And they go, when we can give you the same amount of chaos for cheaper the cost. And I said, I'll take it. I'll talk to my team about it. I'll take it. And the next thing I know, I'm, within 24 hours, I'm taking wow. capital out of my house, which my house in Aspen, Cold Isle, buying a house down here. I bought, I bought this condo. With capital out of my house in Aspen, Colorado, because I got more for my house. Oh, yes. In Aspen, Colorado. And so now I feel like a queen living in my castle. Yes, you are super, Win. I appreciate you took the time, and I know it's difficult to talk, but I just love the energy about you. There's this spark within you. That I find that wherever you go, you amplify that area. And I'm hoping this information goes out to people and they realize in the audience that sometimes there's people that are born with these kind of conditions. It wasn't a choice, maybe an accident or whatever. It wasn't a choice. And they still go after what they want. They don't make excuses. They just make it happen. They have the faith. And they just make it happen like Win is. So I appreciate you, Win. I appreciate you coming on the show. And definitely keep in touch. I will try to keep in touch. And as I said, if people Google Ask Win, I'll look it up on my website, askwin.weebelief.com. You can find all my information there. I also Great. coach people on how to start a podcast and coach Good. people on information about cerebral palsy so they can Beautiful. take it out into the world and yeah thank you so much for sharing that i appreciate you and audience thank you once again for joining us for another episode wins information will be in the show notes where you can find and learn more about her and what she's doing, especially all the books that she has written. She wrote books too. Come on, guys. There shouldn't be any reason why you aren't taking that step forward, why you're not moving ahead towards your dreams. We become our worst enemies sometimes. So we got to go past that, see inspiring people like Wynn and just go, just do it like Nike says. So thank you so much. And Wynn, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you.